Hello everybody, this is Tim again here, here to talk about Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth. Just got my double feature here. Got Hellraiser 3 right there, Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth. And of course next we'll be talking about Hellraiser 4, Bloodline. But just to jump into Hellraiser 3 here, Hell on Earth. Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth. Joy Summerskill is an ambitious TV reporter whose life is changed forever when she witnesses the horrific death of a tormented teenage boy. Torn apart by bloody chains, determined to find the truth behind this gruesome vision, she discovers the Lamont configuration box, which opens the door to the Cenobite's demonic world of pleasure and pain. Once again, Pinhead walks the Earth, creating a new army of Cenobites from the transmutated flesh of his victims his one desire to reclaim the box and free himself forever from the powers of hell hellraiser 3 hell on earth an ancient an anthony hitchcock film um starring terry farrell paula marshall kevin bernhardt uh Peter Boyton and Doug Bradley as Pinhead. Special effects by Bob Keane. Directed by Anthony Hitchcock. Executive producer Clive Barker. Film runs 98 minutes. Okay, let's just jump into Hellraiser 3 here. This is the film where they really kind of like tried the mainstream Hellraiser. Now Pinhead is the star of the film. And I've been saying in my last two videos that the Pinhead like character kind of reaches his arc with part two. But if you can add more to a character and stuff like that, I'm all for it. And they do decently with bringing back Pinhead in this movie. It's not like a really stupid way of bringing him back. It's kind of an interesting way that works. Uh, basically, the Pillar of Souls from the ending of the last film has Pinhead's soul in it. This jackass guy who runs a nightclub called The Boiler Room, is the character's name is J.P. Monroe. <laughs> he buys it. And he's uh he like collects all this morbid art and stuff like that and he uh he gets bit by a fucking rat and like slings the blood on the statue and Pinhead eventually comes to life in his room while he's like fucking some chick. Well, he's, what's funny is he's fucking her while he's like smoking a cigarette at the same time. I, I just found that fucking hilarious. And uh, of course the chain shoot out of the statue. They eat the girl. Uh, decent death scene. Her skin gets ripped off, but the statue's like swallowing her. Uh, it's like eating her. But it's like a little bit of CGI, so it's kind of a, eh, a little iffy on that. CGI mixed with Hellraiser is not something I enjoy. But, uh, and so Pinhead basically fills him full of bullshit and tells him that if he will help him, that he'll make him like his right hand man and all kinds of horse shit. Uh, so JP decides to help Pinhead. He wants to, like, bring in other people that he can, like, eat because he has to absorb so many bodies or whatever until he can come out of the statue in his own body. So you got that going on, and you got the new hero of the film, which is uh, this character named uh, Joey Summerskill, played by the act an actress named Terry Farrell. She's all right. She's no she's no Kirsty, but she's fine. I mean, she's not really a big. I mean, she's not a problem or anything. She's fine. Uh, she's like wanting to work on a story. She's wanting to advance up and be a real reporter. And so she's at this. She's at a hospital, and she like there's this boy that gets wheeled in. He's got chains and shit coming out of his head or face or whatever and everything. And, you get a really crazy, like, over over the top scene where he's like, he like fucking explodes at the hospital. His body does. It's kind of cool. Kind of neat effect. Um, this film is kind of like the Michael Bay, uh, like, Hellraiser film because everything's like so explosive and over the top in this one. Like, at the end of the film, when Joey's like running away from Pinhead, and, like, the whole fucking, <laughs> the whole fucking city's like attacking her. Like, every random thing is like blowing up. It's like if Michael Bay kind of directed a Hellraiser film at certain points in this movie. But, um, so, you got Pinhead, he wants to come back, obviously, and then you got the character of Joey, who keeps, like, having, like, dreams of her father, who was in Vietnam, and got left behind, uh, during Vietnam, and he, he died, obviously, <laughs> but, uh, so she, she keeps having nightmares of that, and Doug Bradley himself, without the Pinhead makeup, keeps trying to contact her in the dreams, which is kind of cool, seeing Doug Bradley playing two characters, playing Elliot Spencer and playing Pinhead, that's cool. I enjoy that. Even though some of the lines they give him as Elliot are a little bit hokey. Like when uh, Joey comes to visit him in like the dreams. There's like this purgatory place that like exists between heaven and hell. 
and that's where he stays at. And Joey comes there to talk to him, and she's like, Elliot, what the hell's going on? And he's like, hell is exactly what's going on. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that's so cheesy. But uh, he, Doug Bradley kind of makes it work. He seems like he's having a blast in this film with all the with, – with so much more screen time that he gets in this one. He seems like he's having a ball, which is cool. I enjoy seeing more of Doug Bradley. Don't get me wrong. I do think the Cinebots' place – in the Hellraiser stories is better suited for like the foot soldier roles, I guess, if you want to call them that, like soldiers. Um, and this one, uh, Pinhead has graduated from a soldier to supervillain. He's Pinhead is a supervillain in this in this one. Um, he's he's became the icon of the franchise completely with this film, and it works for better or worse. They give him more screen time, but they also give him more hokey lines. Um, he gets some cool scenes though, like Pinhead comes to life in the film finally. Uh, but uh, JP, there's like this girl in the film named Terry. She's like a real sweet girl, but she's kind of depressed and everything. And uh, he like calls her up, gets her to come over there, and he's wanting to uh, feed her to Pinhead. And uh, she ends up knocking him out, and Pinhead ends up talking to her and then giving uh, giving him JP. So he kills JP instead and puts like a fucking piston or something through his head i know the cinnabite is called he turns him into a cinnabite too and he's like called piston head i think which is a really stupid fucking name for a cinnabite piston head but whatever yeah the cinnabites in this film one of the weaknesses of this film is that pinhead is now like unbound from hell's laws so he can like do almost anything um so he has like almost unlimited power so the Cin he can make his own Cinnabites, and the Cinnabites that he makes are fucking atrocious. They're some of the stupidest looking Cinnabites ever. We got Piston Head, and then he turns Terry into a Cinnabite, and she's got like a fucking cigarette in her throat because she keeps smoking through the whole movie. There's a lot of smoking in this movie, but she keeps smoking through the whole movie, so she's a Cinnabite with a fucking cigarette in her throat, and that's just so fucking stupid. Uh, and then you got this, uh, and then when Pinhead comes to life at the club, you get a really cool scene, though, where he like massacres everybody. Um, you get some silly deaths, though, where he, like, kills one dude throwing CDs in his head, and the guy becomes, like, the fucking CD Cenobite because of that, because he likes to play CDs or <laughs> whatever. Um, you get some silly deaths, like, uh, where this fucking, like, water comes out of this cup and turns into a, uh, like, a pinhead's head, and then turns into, like, a fucking, like, icicle or something that flies into her mouth and stabs her. That was kind of silly. Um, but, uh... It's a really cool scene, though, because you get everybody getting wiped out at the club, and then the doors slam on them, and they're, uh, they're not able to make it out. And fucking, you can just, like, hear the chains whipping from behind the doors and see the blood coming underneath the doors. That's cool. That was cool. That was effective. Um, but, you know, the Cinnabites that get created in this film by Pinhead are fucking horrible. They're horrible. It seems like they're trying to sell action figures. And we got Piston Head, CD Head, Cigarette Throat, whatever the fuck her name is. Um, but, uh... Yeah, um, a lot of shitty Cenobites. And then you got this character named Doc, who's like Joey's cameraman. He's like a good buddy with her and like helps her do the movie. And he's a fucking horrible actor. I don't know the actor's name that played Doc, but he is fucking atrocious. But through the movie, um, Joey's like trying to investigate the story of the box because the kid who like body blew up at the beginning of the fucking movie in the hospital, he had the box in his hand that he had stole from the statue that JP had in the club. She wants to investigate it. She calls up, like, the Chinaran Institute and, like, finds out that the statue came from there uh, or the Pillar of Souls, whichever you prefer to call it. You find out in the film that, uh, that Elliot's soul was freed, obviously, in the second film, but his evil was too strong and it hid and it waited and his evil has, like, manifested itself, like, the pure evil form without the human part to, like, balance it out, I guess, of Elliot. Uh, so the evil has, like, manifested itself, so Pinhead's, like, pure evil, unbound, like, by Hell's laws now, so he can do whatever the fuck he wants. So he wants to destroy the box so he won't ever have to go back to Hell, so he can just rule on Earth in his own kingdom. Um, that's kind of, that's, well, that's pretty cool, I would say. I, I like that idea. It's like unbound Pinhead. That's kind of neat, but... Why is he? Why is his evil so powerful that he's able to come back? Not the other Cenobites. I would have loved it if the other ones would have came back too, because replacement Cenobites we get in this movie, like I've said numerous times, are fucking horrible. But I would love. It. I would have loved it if his original crew would have came back with him. That would have been great. But you don't get that, sadly. Um. So another thing is, Pinhead can't take the puzzle box from Joey. He he like cannot take it from her for some reason. It never explains why. I don't know. It, 
never explains it, but what the fuck ever on that one. Uh, so she has to, only way you can get the puzzle box from her, she has to give it to him voluntarily. So pretty much what you get is Doc gets killed and he turns into fucking Cenobite camera head who walks around making cameraman puns all the time. Like they kill some people and he goes, that's a wrap. And I'm like, oh, oh God, oh. That's horrible humor for a Hellraiser film. So a little bit of humor sometimes, like in part two, when Tiffany's first word is shit. Like when she sees the Chenard Cenobite. That can work. But in this movie, when he says like a really corny camera pun, that's a wrap. That does not work. That humor does not work for Hellraiser. That is fucking horrible. I, that's horrible. But you get all these new Cenobites. Uh, oh, you get a cameo by Kirsty, like I was saying, that when a. Uh, when Joey is like trying to investigate what uh, the puzzle box is and everything, she watches like a videotape of Kirsty. You get a cameo, well, by Ashley Lawrence, I mean, you get a cameo by her, uh, which is cool. She's explaining on the videotape about what the box is and it unleashes demons and shit. Cool cameo by Ashley Lawrence. I would have preferred it if Tiffany would have been the hero in this film, from the sec the character from the second film. But uh, Joey's character, she's alright. I'd prefer Tiffany, but Joey's alright. So. Of course, the boiler room massacre happens. Joey heads down there. She wants to fucking, you know, take out Pinhead, I guess. Salt, uh, t use the puzzle box against him, send him back to hell. She gets down there. Pinhead's massacred everybody. Uh, Pinhead tries to talk her into giving him the box. She says, go fuck yourself, basically. She takes off running. That's when you get, like, hell on earth. <laughs> Hence the title, where Pinhead and his newly formed Cenobites are, like, destroying everything in the city while they're chasing after Joey. It's mildly entertaining. When Pinhead does come to life and the Cenobites are wreaking havoc on Earth, this is when the film kind of goes down a little bit. Because Pinhead turns into like uh, pretty much a, a slasher movie icon now. He's became a slasher. He's became, He has become a slasher with this film. And it kind of demeans him a little bit and demeans his character a little bit. Even though it's extremely fun to watch. I'll go ahead and say it. This is a two and a half star film out of a possible four. It's not a horrible film. I wouldn't even say it's a bad film. It's just a it's just a decent film. It's a big step down from one and uh and a step down from part two. It's a decent film, not a horrible film by any means, or even a bad film by any means. I do recommend people check this film out if you're a Hellraiser fan or if you're a Slasher movie fan. If you're more of a Slasher movie fan, I would say that you'd probably like this film better than the first two actually, because there's more slashing than gashing going on in this one. But uh if you're like a a fan of all different types of horror movies, then I would say you would probably consider this film only a decent film compared to the first two. That's what I consider it only a decent film, but it's still, it's still not a bad film by any means. But uh, so you got Pinhead, and the newly formed Cenobites, chasing after her through the city. Um, you got these cops who show up. You got this other Cenobite who's got like barbed wire wrapped around his face, and he's like, he was like the bartender. Uh, I think he might be the Barbie Cenobite or something like that. I don't know for sure. He, like, uh, fucking spits out fire, which is kind of interesting. Uh, these cops show up, and like, fucking shooting the Cenobites, and uh, he, like, throws uh, some gasoline on him. You get a really horrible acting job by one of the cops who goes, Shit, gasoline! <laughs> so, fuck, so fucking horrible. Such a horrible line delivery. <laughs> then he sets them on fire, and the fucking vehicles explode. And after that is when you get the camera head Cenobite going, That's a wrap! I fucking hate that shit. Hate it. Then you got Pinhead still chasing after her, and like I said, the whole fucking city is like blowing up. Everything's blowing up, trying to kill her. Fucking like manhole cover, manhole cover flies off and tries to hit her with it like a frisbee. <laughs> that that was a little bit much, but uh, so she makes it into a church. Pinhead walks in the church. All the windows explode. Okay, pretty cool effect scene. Pinhead makes it up to her. He like uh does some kind of crucifixion pose. He like pulls the nails out of his head and puts them into his hands and does like a crucifixion pose. And then the like preacher. Like holds a the preacher holds a cross in front of his like holds a cross in front of Pinhead in one scene and the cross like evaporates or something like that and it's kind of a weak effect. Um, it's a little it's dated a little bit kind of a weak effect. But uh, then the pr preacher's like running towards Pinhead and Pinhead like grabs him and like takes part of his body and like puts it in the or like pulls out like part of his body from one of the wounds he has on his uh, gut or whatever and like puts it in uh, puts it in the preacher's mouth. It's a really gross scene, uh, but then he decides, you know, I'm tired of playing around, uh, or I'm tired of dicking around, or whatever. I need to, you know, go after Joey. She's got the box. Well, she basically tells him, "This is what you want. Come and get it, you ugly fuck." I think, or something like that. Uh, 
What another funny scene is like when uh, she's in there talking to the preacher and he's like, "Demons are just metaphors; they're not real," or something like that. And uh, then Pinhead, the doors open up, and Pinhead comes in, and she's like, "Well, then what the fuck is that?" <laughs> I thought that was funny, but uh, anyway. So Pinhead's still after. They make it to like a construction yard. They're there. Um, this is a. Uh, I do like this line from Pinhead. He's talking about the new Cinnabites. He's like, they're, sh they're a shadow of my former troops. And I'm like, no shit. <laughs> then all, he's like, uh, then all, a bunch more of them start showing up. And he's like, more friends come to play with you, Joey. <laughs> I like that line. It makes me laugh. And But she ends up solving the box. And she's like, play with this, Pinhead. I think this might be the only time he's actually referred to as Pinhead in the franchise. But I like the line. I like the way she delivers it. And the box, of course... Starts zapping all the new Cenobites to hell and zaps Pinhead, but I guess he fights it back and doesn't go. So then it's like you go inside, like the whole the scene, like the scenery starts changing and the flowers and shit. And then her dad shows up, or who she thinks is her dad, but uh, it's actually Pinhead, and she gives the box to him thinking it's her dad, which I'm like, you fucking idiot. She must have like Nancy from a Nightmare on Elm Street 3 syndrome. What a fucking moron move. But uh, who would be so fucking stupid they would fall for that? But anyway, so Pinhead has the box now. Of course, he's had to invade her mind into her. He's he's had to come into her dream world where Pin, I mean, where Elliot has power there. So you get a face off fucking you no know, Doug Bradley versus Doug Bradley, which is kind of neat in the way they shoot it with the camera angles and stuff is kind of cool. Uh, because it's obviously the same actor having to play both roles, and, uh, Doug Bradley does fine. I think he does a better job playing Pinhead, though, than he does Elliot. I think he has more fun playing Pinhead, which, you know, obviously he would. Any actor probably would, getting to do all the shit Pinhead gets to do. He gets much more screen time. Um, so, Joey gets, like, bondage up, and then there's, like, this little thing that comes up out of the ground. It's, like, gonna stab her, I guess, or something like that, or shoot her in her mouth or something or stab her in her mouth or something, or turn her into a Cenobite or something, and it's like, looks like a dick, looks like it's got sperm or something coming out of the end of its mouth, I thought that was funny, kind of a little bit silly, some of the sexual references and stuff like that in Hellraiser get, do get a little silly sometimes, but, uh, so you got that, which, it's a little silly, but it's still entertaining, and then, uh, fucking Elliot decides, fuck this shit, I gotta take him out, so he wants to merge back with Pinhead, uh, and then have, uh, he wants to sacrifice his, his spirit, you know, because he's, well, a spirit now. And he wants to fucking merge with Pinhead uh, so Joey can send him to hell. And he starts merging with Pinhead. Uh, Joey gets loose. She grabs the box. Pretty cool scene, special effects scene when he's, like, merging with Pinhead. It's like their heads are, like, twisting together. Pretty neat. Uh, some little bit dated effect on the merging. Not too much. But they end up merging back together. Joey uses the box, sends Pinhead, uh... Well, she uses the box and turns it into, like, its diamond form and then fucking, like, stabs him in the chest with it. Uh, that was decently entertaining. I like that. So she stabs Pinhead in the chest with it. And then on the fucking, he, like, gets, uh, zapped. He lo it's like he turns into electricity, kind of a look or something like that. He kind of looks like electricity or something a little bit. And, like, zaps into the diamond. Uh, it's a pretty neat little special effect. Uh, I like it. It looks good. It looks decent, you know, not bad. It looks, it looks, it looks good. I would say for the time this film came out, which is probably 1992, maybe three, something like that, I think. But it looks good. And then that's pretty much the end of the movie. Joey takes the box, puts it into cement, and then the next scene, uh, the film ends on a cliffhanger, where it's like, uh, we don't know how much later after the ending of the film, from where Joey puts the box into the cement, but you got like, this big fucking building that's like modeled after the box, like designs on it and everything are. And then the film just ends right there and obviously sets up for Bloodline. Um, so it's kind of a neat little cliffhanger. Uh, I would have hated this cliffhanger if they wouldn't have made a part four. Because I wouldn't. I would have been like, you know, what the fuck is this shit about? But since they made a part four, I don't mind it. Because it leads, you know, into the next film. So, yeah, all in all, it's a two and a half star film. Pinhead gets a little bit more silly and gets more goofy lines in this one. Um... And becomes uh, pretty much a super villain with this one, <laughs> or a slasher icon, uh, or a or a straight up slasher, whatever you want to call it, with this film. But he's still really entertaining, and the film still has an entertaining, you know, vibe to it, and an entertaining feel to it. Uh, it just gets a little goofy sometimes with the whole like Cenobites on Earth killing everybody because this, 
the idea of like the the Hellraiser hell like uh, invading Earth is a cool idea. That is a cool idea, and this and was and would and was a good idea for a film for a Hellraiser film. But just the way they go about it with these new Cenobites who all look like shit uh, and are just really stupid, and some of the goofy pin headlines and some of the plot holes and stuff or things that aren't explained. I mean, like why he can't just take the box. Those things like that hurt the film a little, but it's still in the two. It's still a two and a half star film. I have a possible four. It's a really, it's an, it's an entertaining film, and it's got fun to it. I would recommend it if you've seen the first two Hellraiser films. I do think Pinhead's character arc, uh, character arc as a character, is kind of complete with the second film. Well, it's pretty much complete with the second film, but I do think they bring him back in this one in a in a, in a decent way, and uh, it, it it is a fun. It is. A, decently fun film not a bad movie by any means but yeah i'd give it two and a half stars it's a decent film um i just to go ahead and say it bloodline is next and bloodline is like one of my least favorites of the franchise but we'll get into that one when we get there but just to end it for hellraiser 3 hell on earth this is a decent film and i enjoy it uh it's obviously not my favorite of the hellraiser franchise that honor goes to part one but I say if you've enjoyed the first two, I do recommend that you check this one out. Yes, I do feel like Pinhead's character arc was completed in part two. But I do I do feel like this film brings him back decently and gives him interesting stuff to do. And, and it, does, it doesn't feel like, like his character arc feels complete with part two. But this film doesn't feel like it's pushing it to me. Like it feels like it brings him back in a way that that works in my opinion. Uh, that works pretty good. So I'll see you guys again with Hellraiser Bloodline.